Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are running from an unseen enemy, frightened and alone, living from day to day, while your pursuer, unrelenting and murderous, is gaining on you, ready to trap you in a place from which there is no escape. Listen now as Escape brings you Charles Smith's exciting story, The Faraway Island. Time is the important thing. If you don't know it now, you will when you've reached the 50 mark. That's why the money was so important. It would give me time. With it, I could return to a life I had lived six years before, during the war, on the island of Amoka. The tropical sun streamed into my room, making it impossible for me to sleep any longer. The morning breeze carried the heavy odor of rotten fish, and just outside I could hear the goats and chickens. This was Papiti. I'd been there five weeks, waiting, making sure I'd lost the man who had followed me from Boston. And now I was sure I had lost him, and in two days I would sail for Amoka. You promised to buy me breakfast. Don't let Mama Tita find you here. Oh, she knows I'm here. She told me where you were, and she said I might wake you. <coughs> Give me a cigarette. <coughs> How do you feel? Terrible. Hey. We shall have breakfast at Queen's, and you can tell me more about your island. My island? Oui. You called it your island. I drink too much. Never listen to a man when he's under the influence. What else did I tell you last night? Oh, you talked of your son. How proud you are of him. <laughs> it was all very boring. I'm sure. What else? Oh, nothing. <laughs> ah, it is going to be a lovely day. What else, Anise? You... You are in love, Adam. Sure I am. With you? No. What makes you so sure? You mentioned her name last night. It was enough. Just hearing the way you say her name. Look, you'd know about these things. Is it possible for a man to love a woman he hasn't seen in six years? If he has not seen her, he has had no reason to stop loving her. Now, you get dressed. I'm hungry. I watched her leave the room and, in watching, compared her to a moeva of a mocha. The moeva of six years ago. It was an unfair comparison. I swung my legs over the side of the bed, stood up, and half an hour later, I was stirring my second cup of coffee. You said last night that you were going to leave Tahiti soon. Is that true, Adam? Yes, I've waited here long enough. I do not understand why you waited at all. 
If I love someone, I do not wait for anything. If I want to go someplace... More coffee, Anise. No, thank you. Adam, I will miss you very much. Could... Could you take me to this island with you? What? I would be no trouble, even if you do not love me. I... We could be friends. No, Anise. You'd find the island very dull. And after a while, you'd find me pretty dull, too. Oh, please, Adam. Mr. I... Adam! Mr. Adam. Oh, good morning, Joe. Oh. oh, I have been looking every place for you. The hotel, the docks, every place. Oh, what is it now? Mama Tito worried? She sent you to collect her bill? Mm. You American. What do you think of his money? Sometimes there are more precious things. Like what? Like... A man's freedom? All right, you skinny little rat talk. Oh, put him down, Adam. You are choking you him. Put me down. Please, put me when down. When you talk. All right. All right, I talk. I was not going to take money for this, but now... Here. All right. This morning, early, a ship docked. It has been taking on copra from the island north of here. Go on. I was there at the docks, and... Keep talking. This man, this American. I heard him asking questions. Where could he find the American who came here from Tonga River six weeks ago? What makes you so sure he was looking for me? The man he is seeking is tall. Very tall and very big. And he is about 50 years old. What did you tell him? Nothing, monsieur. I was sure you would appreciate it if I told him nothing. Denise, you still want to go out to that island? Oh, oui. There's a ship leaving today for Rarotonga. We'll be on it. Gildan sat low in the water, its belly full of canned goods for the island. According to the shipping notice, it would sail at high tide. I made arrangements with the captain. Well, it is a very unusual request, Veneer. Uh, Veneer. Hamish, Adam Hamish. Uh, Veneer Hamish, uh, what you are asking me to do? Such a waste. It's my money. Oh, I was not referring to the money. Uh, but very well, I will do it. Good. What time do we pass Morea, Captain? It will be close to midnight. You understand the girl is not to know. Yeah, I understand. I do not approve, but I understand. An hour later, we weighed anchor, and I saw Joe on the dock. He grinned at me and then scurried away, anxious to report back to the man who had hired him and get a few francs for the information that... I had sailed with a niece for Rarotonga. Then the night came bright and clear, and it wasn't long before the great shadow that is Moray Island appeared off our port bow. Stop all engines! Are you ready, Mnir? Yes. Over here. You have not told the girl? No. That is wrong. I hope someday she meets you again. Maybe she will. Take care of her. See that she gets back safely, will you? You will have to hurry. We are too close to shore. Adam! Adam! Now, Maria, get in. Uh-huh. Roll away! Adam! Adam, where? What are you doing? Adam, wait! Two weeks later, I boarded the only schooner that services Amoka. Five days out, we put in at another island to pick up a passenger. Then we put out to sea again. I was sitting on deck watching the purposes race along the side. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Mind if I join you? No. I, uh... <laughs> I owe you an apology, you know. Huh? I've been staring at you. I hope you didn't notice. No. Tell me, is your name 
Hamish? Adam Hamish? Yes. I thought so. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Crawford, J.C.W. Crawford, Copper, Government Control. I was sure you were Hamish. This chap in Papiti last week described you so perfectly. Last, last week in Papiti? Yes, I flew down to catch the schooner. This fellow, what did he look like? Oh, uh, an American chap, decent sort. Somehow I, I got the impression he'd just flown in from Rarotonga. I remember he said he'd been off on a wild goose chase looking for you. The ships that sail the southern waters usually carry a well-stocked armory. The skipper of this one liked rifles, liked them so much that he wouldn't part with one for less than $300. But for my purpose, it was worth the price. Good shooting. You hit him right forward to the dorsal fin. There's another over there, kid, have a try. <laughs> no, thanks. I'm a rotten shot. Uh, Captain says we'll be landing tomorrow. You intend staying on a mocha? Yes, I do. Good. I'll have someone to talk to when I come by every couple of months. Have you been there since the war? No, not since 44. Well, I hope you won't be disappointed. You know, when you Americans left, it seemed to take the heart out of the people. Have you ever lived on the island? Only for a bit in 19... 1949, it was. Do you... Did you ever know a woman called... Maeva? Mm, no. Can't say that I did. Uh, native woman? Uh-huh. Oh. I see. Let me tell you about a mocha. The maps say it's an atoll. Twelve miles long, surrounded by coral reef with a passage through the reef to the deep harbor inside. But it's more than that. It's a state of mind. It's peace and contentment. That is what I remember. You have come back, Captain Hamish. Yes. This house will be as your own until my people have made your house ready. Mm, thank you, Amano. You will find many changes, Tane. We are older. All of us are older. I'm going to know, uh, where will I find Moeva? She is dead, Tan. De dead? Moeva? Yes, Tan. She died a little while after you left the island. They had buried her on a hill overlooking the bay. I stood for a long time looking at the ground in which she was lying, and in that place the memory of her was sharp and clear, but it was only a memory. Those first days I walked around the island, it wasn't the same. With Maeve, I'd never noticed the flies, the heat, and the quick torrents of rain. But the people hadn't changed. They still walked with an unmatched dignity, and I was glad to be home. Eight weeks later, a schooner sailed through the passage in the reef. Through my binoculars, I could see Crawford on the deck, and standing beside him was a taller man. Captain Hamy. Yes, I see it. You will go to the dock, Tony? No, I will wait in my house. Tell your people that if anyone should ask for me, I will be here in my house. Yes, Tony. I watched and I waited until the tall stranger started walking slowly up the beach toward me. When he reached the whitewashed stones that marched the beginning of my land, I raised the rifle to my shoulder. My finger slid across the trigger, and then I saw his face. This man who had followed me across half the world was my own son. We will return to escape in just a moment, but first... All Americans, men and women from teenage up, are urged to enroll for Ground Observer Corps service in every locality. You are needed immediately, and the job to be filled is an important one. Write or telephone your nearest Civil Defense Center, or write to Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. That's your own Civil Defense Center, or Ground Observer Corps, 
Air Force, Washington, 25, D.C. And now, back to Escape. I sat there watching as my son slowly made his way up the path to my house. Then I went to the door, the rifle still crooked across my arm. You're a fool! I could have killed you easily! You still can. Do it now, you'll never get another chance. Well, what are you waiting for? Paul! You know why I'm here. Take you back. You're ready. We'll leave now. If not, you better use that rifle. What's it gonna be? I'm staying here, Paul. Are you sure? We fought silently as men do who are convinced their cause is right. He was taller than I remembered and heavier, but he lived too much in the city. It didn't last long. I took some rope and bound his arms and legs, and then I threw a cup of water in his face. Come on, snap out of it. You're not hurt. You're not taking any chances, are you? No. You think the schooner will leave without me? Yes. We might as well make the best of this, Paul. We're going to be stuck here together for two months. On time? I will. After the schooner has cleared the harbor. It started to rain. For a long time, he didn't say anything. He just sat there staring at me, filled with hate. Then... How much of the money do you still have? About 2200 That's beautiful. It's my funeral. Sure, your funeral. You embezzled $10,000. You say it's your funeral. Everything's fine. You shouldn't have come after me, Paul. I didn't want to. I tried to forget I had a father. And I would have if the place and the company our friends would have let me. I'm sorry. You never thought about what would happen to me, did you? That I couldn't get a job in town anymore the way people looked at me because you weren't there to look at. I'm sorry. Sure, sure. Who sent you after me? The bonding company? Nobody sent me. It was my own idea. I want to drag you back so I can live my own life again, not share yours. What made you do it? Why did you do it? You wouldn't understand even if I told you. Why not? Because you're too young. I cut him loose that night, and the next morning I showed him around the island. He walked among the people of Amoka. He watched the palms swaying in the gentle breeze. He looked at the beauty of the island, but he didn't really see any of it. Here. This spot here. They should do it. Should do what? What are you talking about? A spot of ground. It's not too far from the village. It's clear brush. I can build my house here. Your house? You didn't think I'd stay with you. I guess not. In a few more minutes, we'd reached the copra grove and were standing before the kiln that used to bake the meat from the shell of the coconuts. Well? You'll work here in the grove. You can have your choice of jobs, planting the young trees, packing the copra for shipping, or keeping the grove clean. Take your pick. Suppose I'd rather not work. Then you won't eat. Amanu! Yes, Tommy? This is my son, Amanu. He used to work in the grove. Yes, Tommy. He'll start tomorrow, but today I want him to enjoy himself. I'd like it if one of your sons would take him fishing. Yes, Tommy. But if he does not wish to go... Well? I've heard stories about the fishing down here. I'll go. Good. How do I call you, young captain? Paul. My name is Paul. (laughs) 
Whiskey? Yeah, please. Yeah. Thanks. The man who tells me you hooked into some tuna. He's starting to run. He said you're quite a fisherman. I didn't know that. There's a lot you don't know about me. We never had much of a chance to get acquainted, did we? Between the war and then when I came home, not much of a chance. No, not much. Have you decided about your work on the Grove? What you want to do? Mano said that the plan is to start by keeping the grove clear of weeds. I'll do that. His hands were raw and bleeding when he came in from the grove that first day. But by the end of the second week, his hands and his body toughened. And then he left the hut the chief had let him use. He'd completed his own. We didn't see much of each other after that. And then... The night of the Kai Kai to celebrate the great catch of tuna. Your son is well liked by my people, Hamish Tane. Well, thank you, Omano. He has done well in the grove. They have made him planter of the young trees. I saw him working among the trees yesterday. Do not worry about his feelings toward you. His head is not clear. He is young. Has he mentioned leaving the island? He counts the days. He says you will both leave when the ship sails. Tane, look there. I looked and saw Paul standing beside a beautiful girl. She was wearing a frangipani blossom behind her right ear. They talked earnestly for a moment, and then she laughed and he laughed. I saw the girl the next day. The blossom was behind her left ear. The days and weeks passed. And then there was only a week left before the schooner would return. Hamish! Hamish Tane! Wake up! Wake up, Hamish Tane! Huh? Uh, what is it? The copra, the grove, insects, Tane. Many, many insects that will destroy the grove. Come on! There are a hundred things that can happen to a grove of young trees, and the worst of them is the invasion of these tiny, vicious termites. No one knows where they come from. They appear suddenly and without warning, and there's only one thing to do. You burn the young trees that are infected. And here, Paddy, see this one? Bring that kerosene over here. Here, give me that. All right, get back, Amano. Uh, what are you doing? He's crazy. Over here, Paddy. Why are you doing it? Stop it. Paddy, Paddy. Bring the kerosene, Paul. No, no, I won't let you do it. I won't let you burn the grove. Paddy. Get out of my way. I said no. <laughs> I opened my eyes to see Paul and Amano standing over me. I got up and looked at the grove, what remained of it, and quickly turned my head away. I... Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand. I, I thought you wanted to destroy it. I, it's all right. Forget it. What do we do about the grove? People have worked so hard, they'll have to start over now. Yes. Well, come on. I'll take you to your house. I stayed close to the house for the rest of the week. I was tired, and I'd made up my mind what I wanted to do. Then the schooner sailed through the reef. I packed my things and went down to the dock. I knew Paul would be waiting to take me back. You, uh, you came down early. Yes. Aren't you ready? Where's your bag? I'm not going. What? I'm, I'm, I'm staying here. I decided to marry Atea. You've given this some thought. You sure? Yes. Yes, sir. Look, I, I, I don't know if this will help, but 
Once you told me I, I was too young to understand why you had to come back here. Even if you had a steel to do it. Well, I, I understand now. And if you want to stay... No. No, I want to go back. Set things right. Look. You don't have to. I know. You'll... Uh, you remember that we're here waiting for you? I'll remember. We'll... We'll keep your house ready. You won't be away too long. You'll come back, Dad. I went aboard the schooner and watched as he walked back toward the village. At the end of the pier, a slim figure joined him. They crossed the beach and went out of sight into the ponds. The girl, I tear, and my son, Paul. Under the direction of Anthony Ellis, Escape has brought you The Faraway Island by Charles Smith, starring Ted DeCorsia as Adam. Featured in the cast were Anthony Barrett, Edgar Beria, Marion Richmond, Vic Perrin, Jack Crucian, and Richard Peel. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You are alone with a murderer, a man who has killed your brother and against whom you have sworn revenge. While unknown to you, your enemy is plotting his own move which, if it succeeds, will mean defeat for you and an end from which there is no escape. So listen next week when Escape brings you Peter B. Kine's exciting story, One-Eighth Apache. Lovely Dorothy McGuire, star of Broadway and Hollywood, will be heard on CBS Radio tomorrow evening in a dramatic story entitled The Fall of Maggie Phillips. It's another in your Lux Summer Theater series, so be listening for it tomorrow night on most of these same stations. The Fall of Maggie Phillips, starring Dorothy McGuire. This is George Walsh speaking. And remember, for suspense all summer, hear crime classics Monday nights on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> 